Vermont and a 20 minute video. That might be just a little bit boring sounding, but I promise Brisk is actually pretty useful on the Vermont. After playing the Schlieffen, I wanted to see what it would be like on one of the slower battleships. But first, let's take a moment to remember why we like playing Vermont. <laughs> we like playing Vermont for massive dev strikes from full HP. And there it is. <laughs> so that is why I want to play Vermont. But of course, the trouble is the speed. Having such a slow, massive ship is a really, really bad thing at tier 10. The ship is very easy to spot and very easy to hit and kill. It's got a pretty large superstructure and some odd shaped armor that allows for easy shot traps to arm armor piercing at basically every single angle. So while Schlieffen is able to take advantage of the extra speed to accentuate its strengths in repositioning and getting itself into some really, really good situations, like we looked at a few videos ago, Vermont has a massive weak point on its speed. And that's what I wanted to see if Brisk would actually help. And to my surprise, I've actually really, really enjoyed it. I tend to play Vermont in areas where I'm most likely going undetected between salvos. Since there is such a long distance and time between those salvos with a 40 second reload, there's a lot of time to make use of the extra speed. And it allows me to get closer to the battle where I'm able to actually deal damage to some destroyers. We actually hit that uh, DT there for a lot of damage. Vermont guns certainly can hurt, especially with the alpha damage on the armor piercing, even with overpens. You can see I already have Brisk activating, even though I'm relatively close. It's really, really, really handy to have because I can get out of situations a little bit quicker, assuming I'm able to go dark, which I often am able to do to positioning myself in a spot where I'm not going to stay permanently lit by the large capital ships. The Yamato is, and the Des Moines, for example, are both outside of my detection range. This is a great way to play a lot of battleships. Montana loves to play like this, just outside of concealment. So you're constantly not surprising people, but you're in and out of detection. And maybe you can get a sneaky broadside shot into someone who's not paying attention to the minimap and those ships that have gone undetected and their last known locations. Vermont is really, really strong in this regard. Waiting 40 seconds kind of sucks, but having these massive guns really can make up for it. And flanking like this is something that I really wouldn't want to do in a Vermont unless I had Brisk, since it would take me so long to reposition away from this flank. I would tend to position myself more centrally so I don't actually end up missing out on the entire fight to try and win this game. This Des Moines goes dark, but he's in the process of turning and a Vermont, well, a Vermont loves that. So double Citadel, devastating strike in this game as well. And now that we've somewhat cleaned up this flank, it's time to go try and support in the middle. I really, really should be trying to get closer to our gearing and Kitakazi here. They're somewhat vulnerable in their positioning, and that's why I'm kind of looking over towards that flank. However, I really should be turning my turrets here. This is a big mistake I made in this game was actually just pushing out this flank even further. I think it wasted a lot of time and I wasn't even close enough to really help these DDs out. At this range, it's really, really, really hard to hit destroyers. At that 15, 10 to 15 kilometer range, I think it's possible but outside of that, it really starts to become a very random thing. So I, even though I'm getting good broadside shots in here and brisk when I'm not shooting is helping me push this flank just a little bit quicker, I think it would be much more productive if I were to turn around as we take off half of that Yoshino's health. He's gonna not go broadside for quite some time. Gonna stay angled very well to us as we showed him why you don't wanna go broadside to a Vermont but we all knew not to go broadside to this ship. Here, getting this speed 
I want to push out this flank. This is what I'm thinking in the moment, but I have already said it's a mistake. I should have turned my guns and I should be getting more towards the center of the map. Brisk isn't really enough on the Vermont to make it into a speed demon that's going to push flanks and really outmaneuver the enemy. It's just enough to make up for the massive weakness. So I finally decide, after getting admittedly a very good hit on the Yoshino, this is where the Vermont has a lot of strengths compared to something like the Montana, another American battleship at tier 10. You can overmatch 30 millimeters of armor, and that's how we got that 17k into that Yoshino. Finally, turning my guns does take some time when not running the turret traverse upgrades and getting myself towards the middle of the map. But we're going to be a little bit too late on that front. I'm taking too much time here focusing on a kiting Yoshino and a Yamato who's doing a very good job staying alive and kiting out this flank. We got a lot of people here, but they're all pushing in. And of course, we all know that when you're pushing, you're at a massive disadvantage, especially against ships that have a ton of overmatch and some massive HE alpha in the Yoshino and Yamato, respectively. Our destroyers, though, have managed to take out a Fletcher in the middle of the map, which is really, really solid, really, really good stuff. But they now know exactly where these two DDs are, and there's a prevention coming around the corner. This is where I would be much more useful if I had positioned myself towards B instead of this flank already. And of course, getting farmed out by a Sherman isn't the most fun experience in the world. So we're gonna turn in anyway, even though it means giving broadside to a Yamato. Probably gonna take some damage there, but we should be all right, assuming they don't get a massive, massive hit. Yeah, one Citadel, that's to be expected against a Yamato. It's a very accurate battleship and it should be doing that kind of damage. And again, looking for those cheeky shots into the Yoshino as he's kiting away, giving me a little bit too much broadside, but I'm pretty sure he's just gonna turn out and slow down. Our two destroyers though, do manage to survive as I believe the Champagne took out the Provincian, but they are, I believe, in Pomeran Hydro range. If I had moved when I told you I had made a mistake, I would have been much closer to these destroyers and a much bigger deterrent in them getting rushed down like this. That's why I think Brisk on Vermont is a good thing, but it can be a little bit of bait, at least in this early stage when I don't really know the extent of what I should be doing in this ship with the little bit of extra speed. Got a little too greedy, and that resulted in these destroyers getting ambushed by a Pomeran. And of course, if I don't quite get up into the superstructure, you can see we're going to bounce even on a ship like the Palmer in a tier 9 that's not really known for being the most tanky because it's pretty easy to hit into the superstructure. At this point, of course, I do have to turn away. I'm giving broadside to a Yamato and a Yoshino who's shooting AP, which is really good to see. Normally you don't see that out of people, but Yoshino AP is actually pretty decent. And of course, the Vermont that I'm very broadside to at the moment. I hoped to deal with this Pomeran and help our gearing survive and our Kitakazi survive, but unfortunately they both go down. And this is where we get into a bit of a problem here. We have no DDs left. Even though we have even caps and we're ahead on points, the enemy now can have all the information that we can't have. They have a massive advantage there and they're capable of encircling us and probably pushing us out of both of these caps. With the spotting advantage and their massive advantage in long range firepower, with that spotting, it's gonna be pretty tough for us to deal with that. I also need to just get out of here because I am slowly getting chipped down by the Sherman and the Yoshino from long range. And I believe a Monarch as well shooting AG at us. I am taking fire prevention, of course, on a ship this big and slow, it's pretty important to get that fire prevention to not take too much fire damage from people. And right on cue, the Yugamo is actually in D, taking that cap from us. So we're gonna be down on caps and they're gonna tick up on points a little bit quicker. But we need to stay calm. We can't just YOLO push back into them because we're gonna eat a bunch of torpedoes from the Yugamo, let's say crossing into B with those torps potentially. And of course, they have a pretty good crossfire setup between the Vermont and the Yamato. So pushing in really, really is a bad idea here, which is why I'm running away 
and I'm hoping to put some pressure on the decap. And I'm hoping actually my team comes with me a little bit. You can see they're all kind of pointed towards the edge of the map. Aramagi is gonna go down to the Yamato, continuing that push that really wasn't gonna work out too well. And our Thunderer is actually also heading that way alongside our Des Moines and our Champagne. Fortunately, our Otago does make a risky turn here in front of this island, and we're both going to go contest the decap. It's tough though against DDs. Really, it's important to monitor the detection icon. We're lit right now, so we know the Yugamo is somewhere in front of us. If I had to guess, most Yugamo players and Japanese destroyer players in general are gonna try and get some broadsides for those torpedoes. So I'm assuming based on the amount of time that he's taken to cap and now has some movement opportunities, I'm assuming he's to my right. That's why I'm slowing down, turning out, trying to angle to these torpedoes that I'm expecting to come from in our spawn. And it's really difficult. It's just a guessing game, really. You notice I'm pretty paranoid about this looking over this way. I'm not really helping my team too much here in running away from the B cap since... The enemy team is pushing in a little bit, and my HP and tankiness could be pretty useful, considering we don't really have very tanky ships left. Thunderer only has 32 millimeters of armor, Champagne even squishier yet. So while I'm at half HP, I'm probably one of the more tanky ships and I'm running away. But it's important to get out of this bad situation where we're getting crossfired by a Yamato and a Vermont and getting outspotted by all these destroyers having to deal with torps. It's important to set up a flank and control it. So us getting into the decap area is really, really, really powerful. And the Otago starts capping. And it's important to notice that he's actually taking the cap. That means we know the Yukimo is not within D at all. And since I haven't seen any torpedoes for quite some time from the south in our spawn, I'm assuming he's not there. That's just an assumption, a risk I have to take. I assume he would have taken that opportunity to launch torpedoes at my broadside. It's pretty free to try and hit a Vermont. It's slow, it's big, it's not very agile. So I'm assuming he's not there. And in fact, I was right. Yugumo is on the opposite side of the decap here, as you can see on the minimap. So I need to be wary of torps now from that direction. So we're gonna have to turn yet again. As we actually get a Citadel on the Yamato, there's the torpedoes, nicely spotted by Artago. Artago is doing a great job of pushing the destroyer away and helping secure this flank. And our team has actually turned around. We're heading back into our spawn, unfortunately, but it is good kiting away and maintaining our ships is really, really, really important right now. With the enemy team ahead on points and caps at the moment, we need to retain all the points we can possibly get that are held within each ship. So it's important we don't die as the game could end very, very quickly at the loss of one or two battleships. It's a couple hundred points swing, meaning we're basically gonna lose then if we lose our Thunderer or our Champagne or myself. Even cruisers retain a lot of points in their ships. So it's good that my team is playing to live at least for now as we get the decap under control. Taking another cross map shot on the Yoshino, Vermont's very good at it. The shells do retain their velocity much better than a ship like Ohio, even though they seem similar in their alpha damage and caliber. They're much better at long range. And we do manage to take out the Yoshino, securing a high caliber. We're actually very close to 200,000 damage at this point, so we've done a lot of work already, but there's much more to be done. I really, really love these close games. If you can't tell, I had a lot of fun playing this one and even watching it back and recording this. I really, really love this because there's so many little decisions that get made that are very important to try and win or perhaps are the reason that we end up losing. So now that we have the two caps to two caps tie, the enemy team is still ahead on points, meaning we do need to stall or get a kill. So I'm gonna go up to the C cap. That's the closest cap I can get to to stall out some points. The Otago is pushing the Yugamo out, meaning that he's either going to be heading north and cutting me off with torpedoes, or maybe heading to the south and the Otago is dealing with him. These, I believe, are Yoshino torps. We don't really have to worry too much about them, spotted from pretty far away. And our Champagne, a fast battleship, 
is actually heading up to sea with us, having the very right idea that we need to get into that cap. Which is really good, since even with Brisk, I'm not the fastest ship in the world, and we need to contest these caps. Trying to kill the Yamato here really isn't going to work out for us too well, since 25k is tough to deal with in the amount of HP at these ranges, especially since he's angled and I don't have any overmatch. So I'm not too worried about killing this Yamato. He's playing the right way and stalling our team out as much as possible. He's done a very good job. Remember, this is the Yamato from earlier when we were pushing up the 1-2 line and he managed to survive against that massive push that our team had. Now the Champagne is about to get into the sea cap and we're down by around 50 points now. With three minutes left in the game, we gotta get a kill and stall out a couple of these caps, maybe collect another cap of our own. The Des Moines does get a radar on the Sherman, but it's just barely too late to get some resets, which is a little unfortunate, but at least we should be able to get the kill secured here. That's the hope. With that point swing, we might barely have enough time, assuming I get into the C cap, to cap C and then get to B. That's the fastest way for me to get myself into a cap and actually be useful. Making use of Brisk here, you can see we're actually going over, or we were going over 25 knots. That's not possible in the standard Vermont, and that little bit of extra speed might just help us here as we are barely ahead on points, but the enemy team has a cap advantage on us right now, so they caught up and have just passed us. Two minutes left and we're basically tied. These kind of games are unbelievable. They very rarely happen, as I'm sure many of you know, blowouts are kind of brutal these days, but they are possible and they're a ton of fun when they do. So collecting this cap, Brisk is still active right now. I'm pointing my nose towards the next cap we need to get to, and a Monarch actually goes broadside. So with only our front guns, we actually end up crushing him <laughs> for 31,000 damage. Yeah, Vermont is scary, assuming the dispersion does work properly. Collecting C here, very, very important that we actually got that cap. Barely nearly got reset, actually. So now I just have to charge in towards B. Couple, what is it, 10 points difference somewhere in there. This is a crazy close game. We just need to stall this B cap and our team needs to live too. That's very important. If anyone dies, let's say the Champagne on low HP or the Des Moines on low HP with all these overmatching battleships, we gotta live. And the Yugamo could very easily step back on the D cap, which would have been the game winning play for their team. As it stands though, I will be getting on B hopefully in time can see this little timer to the offset of the uh, top middle of the screen here. It shows the enemy team is going to win. Whoever's highlighted is the team that's going to win at time out. And as we get into the cap, it swaps to us. This mod is super, super clutch for these late game scenarios, letting us know what we need to do. And we just need to sit in this cap, stall, contest, and the points are going to catch up and hopefully that means we're going to win. And I'm saving my salvo here. I'm waiting to see if the Vermont or the Monarch was going to charge around the island. I wasn't gonna get another reload, so there wasn't really much point in wasting it on a bow in or a stern in Yamato who's just running away. I can't kill him, so I may as well wait and hold on for that potential last second push. But it doesn't happen, and we do win the game by seven points at the end. I think Brisk Vermont might have been the difference maker. I don't think I would have got into the caps in time. We probably would have lost without Brisk. Now that's just one game, and to be fair, there are some other very good skills to take, but making up for that massive speed weakness on Vermont seems pretty good, considering Brisk gets us up to a reasonable speed of just over 25 knots. So for the build, you may have noticed I was actually taking more fire damage and maybe I was dealing a little more damage than I should have. Yeah, I'm using super heavy AP shells. I figure if I'm waiting so long and I'm probably playing a little more passive due to the long reload and slow nature of this ship, I may as well get the absolute most out of these salvos. That's what I'm running right now. 
And I really do like Brisk on this ship. Surprisingly, I really enjoyed the little bit of extra speed to get into position at the beginning of the game, reposition in the mid game. I've played much more than just these couple games already with this ship. And I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. So I'm probably going to give it a try on even more battleships, surprisingly. There's not too many mandatory tier 2 skill points, in my opinion. I don't find I need priority target for how I play the game. Vigilance is useful for sure. Grease the gear is very useful. Even IFHE. They're all quite useful. But Brisk could slot into a few builds of mine. So I'm going to be trying it out. Uh, but let me know what you think about Brisk on some of these battleships in the comments below. I think it could have been a bit of an underrated skill when it came into the game. Of, as far as the upgrades go, this is what I've got right now. I do love me some cross map shots, as many of you know. So I run Artillery Potting Room 1. It's probably a little better to run Main Battery Mod 2 though, get those turrets a little quicker. And I probably should be running Main Armaments Mod 1. This is Remnant from an AA build I was actually trying. You saw my turrets actually did get knocked out. And that almost cost me some salvos into the Palmer in the mid game there. So running Main Armaments probably makes a little bit more sense. But that's the Brisk Vermont. Again, let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Maybe this is something you guys have been running on your battleships and I had no idea about. It's seems pretty good to me. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.